It's one of the earliest surprises that I had that I did not expect as I entered the Silk Road community and the deep web community, or the dark net community, I should say, was how, and it made sense in retrospect, but I was expecting, maybe because of the way the media had portrayed the story, I, you know, the, the kind of, the propaganda kind of seeped into my own head, and I was expecting just like breaking bad on the internet, you know? Um, and really what I encountered, and it is, this is not like to exonerate them at all, it's not a moral judgment, it's just factual, that what I encountered was the architects of the Silk Road and the people behind these technologies, whether you like them or not, whether they're, even whether they're criminal or not, they were very bright, very tech adept, very political, like to a man. Everybody I spoke to in that world was very politically motivated. Far more philosophical and political than I think you probably assumed, right? Much more than I expected. And I expected a couple of them, but then it was sort of, and then another, and then another. And these are not people who knew each other. These are people who are in different parts of the world. Some of them had already gone to jail. Some of them were on their way to jail. Some of them were on the lam. But they were all very political, very technologically adept. Um, some of them came from the hacktivist movement. Some of them didn't. Some of them were quite young and had just come out of college or whatever. Did you but find that any, was unexpected. Did you find any of them have a main goal of trying to make a profit off of what they were doing? Or was it mainly philosophical, political? Um, you know, largely the core architects of the Silk Road that I connected with were... Um, were not uh, profit motivated um, and didn't have any money. Like, the, the, like in the present day, did not live. They were mostly like grad students. Like they didn't come from money. They didn't have money. Um, some of them had made money during the Silk Road period um, and sort of were back living a more hacktivist kind of existence. I, you know, I met a couple that were just. I met one in one individual um, alone who uh, had a father who was uh, really sick with cancer and and. He was young and, and reckless um, and had gotten into the Silk Road and become quite a big vendor, gotten caught and was going to jail. Um, it was very contrite about it and was like, look, you know, and, you know, just to be really, like, this was one person I met who was like, this was really stupid. Um, I really got in over my head. I really was trying to make money for my family and now I'm going to jail for the next eight years. Uh, they even tried to put his mom in jail because the, the drugs, you know, were being transacted through his home and he lived at home still. He was only 20 years old. Um, so it was really catastrophic, but he wasn't high up the food chain at the Silk Road. He was just one of the vendors that I encountered. The actual architects there that I met were much more politically oriented, which in retrospect wasn't that surprising because the dark net in those days and navigating tour, we can get into all that in those days, was a little cumbersome in 2000. 10 and 2011 and 2012. You had to be a very early adopter. <laughs> exactly. You had to really know your way around these technologies. And to, to engage in radical activity on the internet anonymously is very, very hard. Um, to remain anonymous online, even in the dark net, is very hard. And one mistake and you're done. So it took a level of acumen even to be able to operate in that space.